Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make build-ups and build and release tension in your tracks. This is going to be my ultimate guide on how to make build-ups. A lot of people have requested that I make a tutorial like this, you know, just sort of breaking down the steps because it's more, you know, than just having a little snare going and having, you know, a little bit of white noise building up. There's a little bit more to it. I'm going to be talking to you about that today and to help me explain this to you guys I'm going to be using this new sample pack that I just dropped which is called Definitive Track Buildups Volume 1. The pack is available on my Bandcamp. The link is right at the top of the description. It's a great way to support me if you guys enjoy my videos. What this is is you get 10 build-up construction kits here. So as you can see these all have different layers to them. It's these 10 build-ups that I made. I'll play you a few of them here. This is the first one. Here's the second one. And I'll play you a few more. So as you can see, it's 10 build-ups here. You get the full kits where you get the individual layers of the builds as audio files. So you can take these and tear them apart, you know, really get to understand what's going on. You can use them as references to make your own build-ups. And you can also just use them to make really nice build-ups. You know, you can just take them as they are in the track or you can take individual layers of each one. You know, they're all at pretty similar BPMs. You can warp them and get them all at the same BPM and then kind of make your own build-ups. But you get this nice palette of sounds to work with to do this. I wanted to create a, just a really nice resource for making these build-ups. And I'm going to be using, this is actually the project file where I made build-up 9 from the pack. So I'm going to be using this and showing you guys everything in the actual project file how I would make one of these build-ups to really make the track sound full and big. Again, it's more than just having like a little ch -ch 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 and a riser, but as you can see it's having all these different layers. So yeah, the link to the sample pack is right at the top of the description. Again, if you guys enjoyed these videos, this is a great way to support me. And yeah, let's get started. So yeah, we got the project file from build 9 here. I'll play this. And I'm just going to be showing you all the different layers here and breaking this down to show you what goes into it because a lot of times I think it kind of seems like, you know, people hear these tracks and think that it's kind of just the most sort of upfront elements like, you know, just the snare and just the riser, but there's a little bit more to it and you can see there's a few different layers here. So we have like this little pluck sound here. Which I'll explain how that was made in a moment. There's like this little reverse crash here, like just in this last bar. We have the sweep. There's like these reverb claps. Which are an important sort of like background element that I'll talk about. Then we have the snare, of course. And the snare is actually a lot more simple than you would think as well. And then we have the kick. And yeah, so I'll just kind of start from the top down and show you what's going on. So the first thing here is this little plucky, as I've called it. <laughs> and so the way this is made is basically I've taken the synth one shot. This is actually from one of my sample packs. It's from one of my OG sample packs from, I think, like 2018 called House Music Volume 2. It's this synth one shot here. It's just this little, like, bloop. So yeah, I just took that, I put it into a little simpler here, you can see I've shortened it quite a bit because I really wanted it to just be like a little, like a little pluck like that. Um, and then what's happening here is there's just a bit of automation. So you can see I'm automating the fade in to kind of go up so it kind of like 
just turns it into a little bit more of a pad over time. And then I have this arpeggiator here. And the arpeggiator is the thing that's making it move. You can hear. That's creating that no 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 kind of speeding up thing. I have the rate here. I have it on the free setting. And then I'm just automating that to speed up. And so what's happening is that's combining with that fade in turning up as the fade in's turning up then it's just kind of turning into this long pad and that's what we're doing there but yeah that's a really easy way to get that kind of like doom 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 like that sort of effect and then yeah there's just a bit of echo on that then i have okay so we have two sound shifters here actually so there's this first one and then i'll show the second one in a new lane so you can kind of see them both side by side. So what's happening here is, yeah, the first one starts, and then there's the second one. So yeah, you can see, just got that to get, that's how we're getting that, like, pitch up. So it's a few things happening. It's the dun 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 with the arpeggiator, and then we're combining that with the pitching up. And there we go. And yeah, I do use plugins, by the way, guys. But honestly, since this is just a project file that I'm not releasing, I didn't really uh, mind just using one here. But yeah, so we got a bit of drum bus after that just to kind of beef it up a bit. Then I have this fade to gray. This is just kind of like a washout. And then there's an erosion at the end. Just right in that last bar, just to give it... This is an important thing, like... It's like that last little bar before it hits, like right... Let's say the drop would start right here on bar 97. That last little bar, you want to do something to make it a little bit more interesting. If you don't have this erosion, it just feels a little bit flat because it's kind of like we've already covered this ground in the build. You know, we've already heard the stuff that you would have if you were just going through there in the bar before. So if you add this erosion, it just gives you something to kind of like pull it through in that last extra bar. It's part of the reason why I have the second sound shifter and why we had this little reverse crash. But yeah. That's an important detail. That's why there's that, ero that that's why there's that erosion on there. And yeah, that's the little pluck. Then we just have the little reverse crash. That's just in there again, that last little bar. Just to kind of give you that. Then the thing about this is this is not even just for this part, but this makes it so that then when you drop into like again, like the drop will be right here on bar 97, then there's going to be like that ringing out that like like that you get from the crash and it kind of adds an effect so that you don't have to have as much stuff there like if you didn't have that there maybe you would have a big or something like that and you could kind of get away with not having that now so this is a nice way to add something in the build up that's actually going to go into the drop and kind of like not just be something in the build up but working for the whole track and then we have uh, the sweep here which sounds like this And yeah, so this, I made this using white noise. What it is, is it's just operator here. And then we just have this going through a bandpass filter. You can see, yeah, so white noise, bandpass filter. And then I'm just automating the bandpass to go up. The important thing to note here is where we have the bandpass sweeping. I don't just start it, like, from the bottom like that and go up to the top. Like, you don't want to just do that because the bottom, you're not really going to hear it. And then at the top... It kind of fizzles out. What I do is I just kind of find a good place where, like, we can start there and then we hear it. And then it's just slowly building up until this point. And then it never is just going to fizzle out because I stop it right before there. So, yeah, we got that. And then I have this chorus here. So this feedback is turned up. So I'll show you what's happening. Here's without the chorus. And then with the chorus. So you can hear it adds some stereo width, but this is also just a really great way to add this sort of like metallic overtone. That's what the chorus does. It gives you that flangey sort of metallic thing. And that's what I've got the feedback up for. And yeah, then we just have the echo and reverb. Uh, I've got this compressor on there, which actually isn't doing anything. And then we just have a high pass filter. And yeah, and then we go to the reverb claps. So these are just these two different reverb claps. These come actually from my sample pack, Definitive Track Effects. I released this a few weeks ago, right here, volume one. It's these two. Shout out to those of you guys that got the pack. But yeah, so 
These are just in here, you know, they just hit like at the start. It's a nice way to kind of be like, you know, right at the start of the build, kind of like signify something new is happening. And then I have this happening here where you get like, it's like, this clap is actually happening on the four. This is the kind of thing that I feel like you don't really hear or you don't really see like in sample packs often but it's the type of thing that you do hear in a lot of professional tracks. If you put this clap on the four here you get a cool kind of rhythm happening because now you get it's like boom 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 with that little like pluck. Now the different elements instead of just playing at the same time and just being full force in your face. Now they're kind of interacting and your build is going to sound a lot better for this reason because you're getting like interaction between the different elements rather than just having everything be right at the same time. So that's why we have that there and that's an important thing. It's a small detail but it's going to make your track just sound a lot better in an almost like subliminal way to the listener. Especially people who don't really understand like what they're hearing in terms of like you know when you're making music. Like, when we're making music, we're producers, we know what's going on, and that sounds good, but if you don't really know what you're listening to, that just kind of creates this more hypnotic rhythm when you're hearing everything kind of interact like that. And yeah, then we had the snare. So this is just one of my snares from my... It's from this tool room. Yeah, this tool room and defected tech house template I made, actually. So it's just this fat snare and just like a nice build-up snare. The build-up snares are really simple. Now, I think people kind of like overestimate what they got to do. All you really need to do is I just had the snare it's just going. You can see we have a little bit of swing there. But then all that's happening is it's literally just doing that this whole way through. I'm pretty sure this is 16 bars. Yeah, it's 16 bars here. So this is like a long build-up. But this is nice, you know, you have your break in your track and you can just have this building and building and building and then finally you reach this huge crescendo and it's going to be really powerful. But that's the idea with the snare. You know, you really just want to kind of set this build up like this, you know, we just have straight snare the whole way through. You don't want to do any like crazy subdivisions or anything. This isn't EDM, but you are trying to just make something that's going to slowly build like this and you can see this volume. It just goes up over time. You know, it just goes straight up. That's all you really need to do. And then finally you get to this point here. It's been building for like 30 seconds now. And the snare finally feels huge. And then there's just a little bit of an automation on this high pass at the end as well. So that's another small important detail that I think people miss. Is if you have the snare, you can hear how the snare is adding that like... That like kind of frequency you really don't want that like right at the end of your build the reason why is because you're gonna have like that low end happening when your drop hits that's all gonna be in the kick and the bass and so and that is good in the build up for part of it but then right at the end if you just high pass the snare really quick with this simple high pass automation you know, all of a sudden it's becoming thinner and it's a nice way to build tension actually. That's really subliminal and people don't realize, but yeah, it's a really simple way to do it, but it's going to build a lot of tension because it's kind of like you're losing that low end and so then when it comes back in the drop, it's going to be really powerful. And yeah, and then the last thing down here is we have this little kick. And so this is a loop of mine. This is actually from one of my sample packs. I believe it is from this definitive techno drum loops too. So this is just a techno kick that I've made in the past. I just use this here as an example, you know, maybe this would be, you know, sometimes I use a different kick in the build like this, but you can also like, this would just be the kick in your track. That you already had. But what's happening here is we've just got a little bit of saturation on this. And then I've got a high pass automation and a low pass automation. So this is what I do a lot in my tracks. And I know a lot of people do these in their techno tracks and house tracks as well when I've studied these tracks. This is how you keep this simple kick and bass interesting throughout the track. Is that it's the same loop 
But then you're getting different automations of filters, and you can see like we have two filters moving at once here. So this is, although it's a very like kind of sitting in one place sound, there's a lot of movement happening even just with this sound, and that's how you keep something like this going. But what's also happening is this is kind of rounding out the track because now you're getting this build up where it has this crazy do 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 do, and then you're getting. It's kind of like grounding it and then what's happening is this just keeps building we have the high pass down here It's the same thing as with the snare. We kind of like lose the high end or the low end as things go on And then it goes do 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 Boom 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 and then you drop in and it's super powerful so yeah it's a simple way to just kind of like round things out and you can see like there's a lot of motion happening because there is this automation you always want to keep that automation going on your kick in the build like this and just keep it dynamic keep it flowing with the rest of where the build is going and it should sound pretty good and yeah so that is pretty much it for this one guys like i said i just wanted to show you a great trick and a few different tricks that I know on how to make these build-ups like this. So yeah, like I said in the beginning, you can get my new sample pack, Definitive Track Build-ups Volume 1 with the free bonus effects. So you get the 10 the ten construction kits of build-ups with everything you need to make your own build-ups. You can take them apart, you know, study them, use them as reference or build your own build-ups, or just use them as they are in the sample packs. Honestly, I'm probably going to be making tracks just using them as they are in the sample packs. Plus, you get this 30 free bonus effects as well, so you get a bunch of stuff to take your tracks to the next level. The link to this is right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp. Like I said in the beginning, this is a great way to support me, guys. I don't make a whole lot off of these videos. But with these sample packs and stuff, I'm able to keep going and keep making you guys awesome videos to keep us all entertained during these times. And yeah, so, as always, thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.